Hi everybody. Today my topic is matrix structural analysis of beams and I will use direct stiffness method. In the matrix stiffness method of analysis, the joint displacement of the structure are determined by solving a system of simultaneous equations which is expressed in the form like this one f equal to kd here d denotes the joint displacement vector f represents the effects of external loads at the joints of the structure and k is called the structure stiffness matrix here we will derive the member stiffness matrix for an individual flag gel element using only joint rotation as degrees of freedom it's very simple Here in this figure, it is a beam of length L with end moments M1 and M2. As a sign convention, the end rotation theta1 and theta2 are positive when clockwise and negative when counterclockwise. Similarly, clockwise end moments are also positive and counterclockwise moments are negative. The end moments M1 and M2 produce the end rotations theta1 and theta2. We can see here in the figure and the relationship between the end moments and the resulting end rotations it can be written as this m, m vector equal to k stiffness matrix actually it is now here we are considering stiffness factor and then rotation vector k this stiffness matrix it is 2 by 2 member rotational stiffness matrix and to relate end moments and rotation we have to use here slope deflection equations but here both psi and the fixed in moment we considered it is equal to zero because here there is no loads there is no loads are applied along the member axis so we considered psi and fixed in moment equal to zero so our equation comes as I mean the end moment can be expressed as m1 equal to 2 ei by l in the factor 2 theta 1 plus theta 2 with simplifications we can write 4 ei over l theta 1 plus 2 ei over l theta 2 this is m1 equal to and for m2 again we can write in the same way m2 equal to 2 e i over l in bracket theta 1 plus 2 theta 2 
So with simplification, it comes 2 EI over L theta 1 plus 4 EI over L theta 2. So we got two equations of moments M1 and M2. Now, both the equations we can write is as a matrix notations like this one this m1 vector then stiffness matrix then we can write theta 1 theta 2 this vector and this stiffness matrix how it comes i showed here at the top previous two slides we had these two equations and from these two equation we just brought the stiffness matrix part which is i over l i over l all the stiffness factors we used it here to form a stiffness matrix Now, the member rotations, stiffness matrix, what you can write here? Already we have seen the previous slides. The member rotation stiffness matrix, this k equal to this big size i mean 4e i over l 2e i over l 2e i over l and then 4e i over l so this individual parts we can write it as k11 k12 k21 k22 because the coefficient 4e i over l and 2e i over l we write symbolically as k i j i mean i and j some numerical values according to the positions so where as i told this subscript define the row and column location of the coefficient in the stiffness matrix suppose the stiffness coefficient k11 it can be interpreted as the moment that must be applied at end one of a beam in order to produce a unit rotation theta one equal to one we can see it in the figure while the opposite end of the beam theta two equal to zero again the coefficient k21 is the resultant moment at the end 2 of the beam already we saw that now similarly coefficient 1 2 and I mean k 1 2 and k 2 2 these two may be interpreted to be the resultant moment at the ends 1 and 2 of the beam respectively when theta 2 equal to 1 in the next diagram we can see theta 2 equal to 1 and theta 1 equal to 0 so it is according to the positions And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Edustube.